Hi guys, welcome back to the First Place Auto Parts Shop. My name is David and today we're going to be taking a look at brake boosters and the options that you have when it comes time to either doing a disc brake conversion kit on your car or upgrading your car with a different type of brake booster. The firewall of your car is a fairly congested place. The brake booster gets bolted between the master cylinder and the firewall and typically lives on the driver's side of the car. Now, what brake booster you use for your car has a lot to do with your engine combination and also how much vacuum that engine pulls. Certain engine combinations don't leave a lot of room for a brake booster. What I have here on the table is a 9 inch, an 8 inch, and a 7 inch booster. The original booster on a car that had a front disc brake rear drum setup from GM would have typically been 11 inches in diameter. This is a 9 inch, this is actually smaller, but it's similar in design to the original brake booster. Now, on big block Chevrolets, especially with certain engine body style combinations, there just is not enough room for an 11 inch booster at the driver's side rear corner of the valve cover. Especially if you're running any kind of a modified valve train that requires taller valve covers, there's just no room. So just the space limitations alone dictates that you're going to have to go to a smaller diameter booster. The next key component when it comes to decide what booster is right for our application, you have to know your engine vacuum. Engine vacuum is affected by a lot of things, but primarily it's camshaft design. Duration, overlap, things of that nature, everything that we love about a big lopy idle has detrimental effects to engine vacuum. So if your car is rowdy, has a, it's a ground shaker, chances are it's pulling less than the 17 inches of vacuum that a full size booster is going to require. And certainly it's going to pull less than the 22 inches of vacuum that these smaller boosters are going to require. So before ordering any kind of a four wheel disc brake conversion kit or a power booster, make sure you take one of these vacuum gauges, you plug it into one of your uh, vacuum ports on your motor and find out what your steady at idle in gear if you're an automatic car engine vacuum is. Again, full size boosters need 17 inches of vacuum and the smaller boosters require 22 inches of steady engine vacuum at idle in gear. So what happens if your application demands, due to this engine size and the valve cover location on the driver's side, this booster, but the engine you put in it is a rowdy, rough idling, making less than 10 inches of vacuum type of an engine? We have an answer for you, and that is this external vacuum pump. This external vacuum pump, typically, well, you'll mount it to your core support, and what it is, is this thing will actually make all the vacuum that your brake system needs to operate properly. So there is an answer if you have a combination that you need this, but it doesn't make enough of this, you're going to need this. Okay, so far we've talked about space limitations and what we can do to address that with a smaller diameter booster. We talked about the importance of engine vacuum for the proper operation of a brake booster and what we can do with an external pump to increase engine vacuum so that the brake booster works properly. The third and final thing that we need to talk about are the number of diaphragms that these boosters have. As we can see, the brake booster on the left, which is a smaller diameter brake booster, actually has a dual diaphragm setup. As opposed to a larger booster, this is a 9 inch, it'd be the same with the factory 11 inch booster. As a general rule of thumb, go with the largest booster that your engine and firewall application will allow. Make sure that you can service your valve train and take those valve covers off and still have clearance with the brake booster installed. I've seen a lot of applications where guys have literally boxed themselves in with a brake booster or a valve cover combination only to realize that they have to remove the brake booster to get their valve cover off. Don't be that guy. It's not worth the hassle. There's too many options available. Hopefully this video has been helpful in better understanding what your options are when it comes to power brake boosters. To find more products like these or a ton more restoration and performance parts for your early American muscle car, simply go to the First Place Auto Parts website at fpautoparts.com. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube where we'll continually be adding new product review videos and also how to install videos that may be a benefit to you when it comes time to either buying your parts or putting them on. Until the next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guardrails.